Hello everyone and welcome to another video in the channel. First of all, I would like to apologize. I actually had recorded this video that you're gonna watch right now, but uh, it had no audio. So I had to take it out and uh, re-record it and now you're seeing it. A um, couple of quick announcements. The portfolio review is open. You can check the link down here. We just released our newest course, the Advanced Textures for Character Creation course. I'm going to show you a special teaser in just a second. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to still have our live streams next Monday. And we're going to continue with more content throughout the weekend. So make sure to like and subscribe to get the best offers. Now, today we're going to be talking about something really interesting, which is the ACES process or the ACES uh, color management tool that we have inside of Maya. And the ACES thing, it's actually the most simple thing that you can imagine. It's its like literally a no-brainer. In Maya 2022, they changed the way that color processing works inside of the viewport here in Maya. And what they did is they added this ACES, which is called, an, it's the Academy Color Correction, like, thing to give us better looking images and better looking uh, renders inside of the viewport. You can turn this off if you want, or you can go back to the on-tone map sRGB, which is like the traditional one. However, I'm gonna explain to you why it is important to understand the difference between these two. So, first of all, we're gonna need to understand what a color space is. And uh, this thing right here, this green, red, and blue like color grading that we have on the back, that's the whole color range that exists on the world, if you wanna call it that. And, um, and what happens is, when we try to capture all of the different colors and brightnesses that we have in the world, in a, inside of a computer or inside of a display, such as a phone, a tablet, or a monitor, we are limited to how much information that monitor can uh, show us. And uh, in the, I think it was like early 90s or late 80s, I'm not sure about the date, but they came up with this thing called the sRGB, which is the standard. So as you can see, this little black triangle that we have right there, that's the way pretty much, I would say like 95% of things in the internet are mapped. Whenever you download an image, a JPEG, a PNG, uh, any any 8-bit image is going to be probably set up with an sRGB curve, which means, and this is important, which means that the color values of certain elements are going to be clipped or are going to be compressed to this sRGB color space, okay? So the problem with that compression is that sometimes we have certain types of images that lose a lot of information from that compression. And the, the easiest one that you guys are gonna be, um, uh, or are you gonna understand, it's an HDRI. So we know, because we use them a lot, that we have this HDRI images. And we know that this HDRI images have more values inside of their image than what we can see on our monitor. So so the whites on those images are, are way higher than what we normally see. Like if I, and actually I can show you real quick. Here, let's go real quick to Polyhaven. There we go. And let's download any, any one, any like, like this one. Let's download this one. And if we open, like if we see this image right here, and if, and if I ask you what color is this, it's just white, right? Like this is a JPEG image, actually, like what we're seeing right now, it's a JPEG. But this image right here is an EXR. And if we bring this EXR into Photoshop, you're gonna see something really interesting. This uh, Photoshop reads this as a 32 image uh, right here. And if I were to sample colors, okay, like let's say I sample this, like let's grab this white right there. See that one right there and that's like stone. If I sample that one and I click here, you're gonna see that that one is actually not white. It's 1.2 and one on the green. So it's, it's, it's going above what we normally would see as white on an RGB image, okay? Now, if we go to other whites like this one right there, that's 2.0 on red, 1.8 on green, and 1.4 on uh, blue. So it's really, it's like double the amount of white that we would normally see. Our eyes and our monitor, we're, seeing, we're still seeing it as white. Like, we're, that's not going to change. But the image itself has more information than what we're actually seeing. Now, if we go to the sun right here, and we take a look, you're gonna see that the value is 10. So this white section right here has all the way to 14 times more white than what we're seeing, okay? Now, what happens when we take an image such as this and we compress it down, if we go here in mode, and we compress it down to an 8-bit image, this happens. Everything gets like crunched down, so we go from a really big margin to a really, really small margin of, of gradients that we have access to. Now we can change the exposure in gamma to, to keep things in the closest possible uh, solution. But if I hit okay, this is now just white. So remember all of the variants that we have here, 14s, 12s, and 10s on value, 
it's all just one. I'm pressing Alt right now to sample different spaces. It's all just one. Remember the stone that we have over here? This guy, which was like a two. If I select it now, it's still on the top, but it's no longer a two. It clips, okay? So it brings the sRGB curve, it brings everything down. Which brings me to this other mathematical thing over here. This right here is the sRGB curve. So as you can see, any value above one is just clipped down to one. It just stops right here. That's the that's the maximum amount of, of, of like a value that it can have, okay? Um, as you can see, the black colors also get clipped down. So you're going to get this higher contrast on images. And that's why sometimes when you're not using proper color uh, management, you are going to get images that are either way too bright or way too dark because the sRGB curve brings everything into like a narrower range, okay? Now, this right here, it's a beauty because this right here is the ACES curve. So the ACES curve has a really interesting thing. When it finds a value above one, as you can see right here, it clips it down as well. It's gonna clip it down, but it won't clip it down to one. It will clip it down to 0.8 right here. And then this extra space right here, if you have values above one, you can see it goes all the way down to 10. It's going to map this S curve range to the 0.8 and 1. So it's going to give you a softer, more balanced look on your overall composition. So if we go back to Maya and I increase the exposure here so we can see things a little bit better. Let's do like a like a two exposure. You're going to see that right now when we're in on tone map, look at the light right here on the HDRI really bad, right? Like really contrasty, we see like a really strong border. Let's change this now to ACES and turn this on. Beautiful, right? We get this very nice gradient and now we're actually seeing all of the range that the HDRI has and we're going to be able to visualize our elements or our assets with a more dynamic range. Okay, so it's just a display thing. It really helps those who are working on like commercial and cinematic things where they need to match things to the plate because it's going to allow them to see things better. I personally feel like for default use, it tends to be a little bit darker, especially if you don't increase the exposure. Like comparing the ACES to the Untone map, the ACES tends to be a little bit darker, but it's more it's it's more correct if you wish. So easy solution if you do want to work with ACES, but you want to see a little bit more here inside of your scene, just increase the exposure a little bit. And that exposure, as you can see here, is going to allow us to see what we have and uh, and create amazing looking things. So that's pretty much it, guys. Now, before I leave, I do want to remind you that we have a special promotion going on, which is the promotion for our newest course. Hey guys, I'm really happy to announce that we have finished the newest course, Advanced Texturing for Character Creation. This is the continuation of our previous course where we created a high poly character. And in this one, I'm going to teach you how to texture, retopologize, bake, and get your character all the way to Unreal Engine. Now, for the next five days, you're going to be able to get this specific course for 90% off in Udemy. You can get the link down here in the description and you're going to get 90% off. This is the lowest we can go for the course. And if you just finished the previous one, this is a perfect way to continue your 3D journey. In this course, I'm going to teach you pretty much all of the techniques that I've learned in the past 12 years. All of the little tips, tricks and techniques are going to be there and you're going to be able to create this amazing result that you're seeing. So. If you want to check it out, make sure to use the code that you're going to find down here in the description. And remember, we only have five days for this discount. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. If you want to learn how to be an amazing 3D artist, this is the video for you. There we go. I'm, I'm really happy with how those uh, color courses uh, like turn out. I think by far they're like one of the highlights of my career. Uh, not only because it's a character of my own creation, but because I've been, I, I was able to share pretty much all of the knowledge that I have all, all until this point. So if you want to get it, make sure to check that one out. As for the color correction things and the ACES stuff, that's pretty much it, guys. You can change these things around. I know it's a little bit technical. I know it's a little, it, it sounds like it might not make a lot of sense. It doesn't really matter, by the way, if we render, uh, or at least it doesn't matter as much. So when I hit render, if I were to hit render, the render that you get is going to be different to what we see on the viewport. We can, of course, use the viewport render right here uh, it's gonna crash my computer because it's really heavy right now but uh yeah so that's it for now guys if you could help us with a like a share a subscription or a comment i would really really appreciate it the channel grows thanks to you and it's thanks to you that we can keep um producing more stuff i'm already i can i can um 
I can announce that I've already started working on the new course that's going to be releasing in February. And I think you guys are going to really, really, really like it. I've shown to some people, clo close friends, the concept that we're going to be doing. And they're like, dude, that's cool. So yeah, stay tuned for more information. And I'll see you back tomorrow for more videos. So thank you very much, guys. And have a great day. Bye-bye.